96 degrees in the shade. We hot in the shade. 96 degrees in the shade. We hot, oh yes, in the shade. Bunny Rugs. William Clark, welcome to the Cutting Edge Podcast. I know you're a little familiar with it by now, right? Yeah, man. <laughs> oh, it's bothering you and sending you my newsletter. <laughs> yeah. Constantly, and I do appreciate it. It's a pleasure. Okay, right. you have enjoyed uh, a rather illust illustrious career. Lead vocalist of Third World Band for almost four decades, a Grammy nominee, a successful solo career among other achievements where did this all begin um i i found out that i liked singing when i was about 15. and um i think it started there you know okay. uh, then um i i entered a few contests in kingston and uh, um then i went into a few bands in a circle um Charles Bogle and the Teddy Boys. Um quite a few, you know. Then I ended up with third world in uh seventy five. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And at the time I believe Third World and a host of other artists, because I was a teenager then, were at the the music was at it, at its peak, I believe, back then. Third World, speaking of them, has been through a few changes. Original members Willie Stewart, Ibu Cooper, and Carrot have gone on to other pursuits, while Cat Core, Richie Daly, and yourself remain staples. What is the single most cohesive element that keeps this group in existence? Because you've been around for such a long time and still doing well. There's no other reggae group like third world the type of music that we play uh, uh, there are few groups in the world that can play that type of music mm -hmm. um catcore to me is if not the greatest but one of the greatest guitarists in the world um richard daly the bass player stanley clark referred to him as the best He's amazed at what Rishi does. Um, and so the group has a unique sound. And one of the main things that keeps us together is that we really enjoy playing music together. We enjoy each other's company. Um, between us, we have a number of children and they all refer to us as uncle. They're also our children. I speak to Richard at least 12 times every day and cat maybe six or seven times per day. Wow. It's not just a band, it's a, a family. And um, one of the main things we did in our early stages was to decide that we would try to keep this group together as long as possible for many reasons and one of them was to show that black organizations um, groups out of the Caribbean out of Jamaica can stay together and build a union and an institution and at the same time have some form of message that you want the rest of the world to hear and I think we have been very successful in doing that because it it's it's been we're being paid no i've never been busier than say this year i've been to places this year that i've it's the first time i'm going to those places and i've been invited back to those places so it, it's just something very special that we have mm -hmm. and to, to to break up the group um, 
to me would be uh, uh, something that is greatly missed to our fans and fam family members across the world. So to us, it's much more than just a group. You know, it's, it's Rich's children are mine, mm -hmm. cats children are mine, and vice versa. My wife is Rich's wife, and Rich's <laughs> wife is... In, in a spiritual sense. In a spiritual eh? way, yes. So that, that is where we rest. And that is why I think we have stayed together. And strange enough, we had the foster fight. We hardly, and if we do have an argument, it doesn't stay for long. It doesn't go on stage with us. Mm -hmm. if, even if it's in the dressing room, minutes before the performance, nobody would ever know that we had an argument mm -hmm. because uh, we are professionals and the audience, that's not their business. They came to be entertained and that's what you're on stage for, you know? That is absolutely amazing. You know, I've noticed the cohesiveness and I've, I've always wondered, now on a personal level, on a personal level, what has this journey with Third World been like for you? I remember as a young person, a teenager, uh, watching um, performances in Carib Theatre. People like Dianne Warwick, um, Sam Cooke, and picture myself um, on that same stage, mm -hmm. even before I knew that um, that's what I wanted to do. Something inside Just keep, it's a feeling, it's hard to express. And then to see it actually happen. <clears throat> to go around the world doing something that you love, getting paid for it, being able to take care of your family. What else could you ask for? So it has I mean, been an awesome, amazing, fulfilling journey been, for you. It has, and this whole thing about it, it seems as if it was just yesterday. Mm -hmm. Everything is still so fresh. Everything is still so exciting. I mean, as I said before, I'm going to new places, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? So it has been a journey that I wish uh, other folks uh, and, and a lot of folks could experience because a lot of people do things that they don't really love. But they have to do it because of the circumstances. Of, yeah. I, I'm in a very special position where I actually love what I'm doing. And it taking me around the world. It's amazing. I mean. <laughs> so a day of work is really not work. Well, I say that all the time. It never work. Ask me, Rugs, you're always on the road. When was the last time you took a vacation? I say, when I'm on the road, <laughs> working, I'm on a vacation. Always on a vacation. Yes, and it sometimes it baffles them. They look, but uh, they would not understand that the hour and a half that I'm on stage, I'm not working. I, I might be sweating profusely and think, but I'm having such a great time. You know, it takes sometime hours after you leave the stage to get off that high. To get back down. Yeah. yeah and yeah. it used to happen to me in radio too. <laughs> yeah, it takes a while. Show, yeah. It takes a long time to get down because it, you're and doing And it's, it's a great high. Mm -hmm. It is. A, it is. Yeah. Now, another baffling thing, because you use the word baffling, and another baffling thing for me personally, and I'm sure for a lot of other folks, is the fact that you have maintained your steadiness, your commitment to the band, and your solo career has in no way faltered or conflicted with, the, with that role. How have you done this? How is this possible? Um, I don't refer to it as a solo career. Okay. I refer to it as an extension of Thurgood. Um, 
to do one album with 12 or 15 songs is not enough for what we have to say. There are other things that I would like to refer to, like my new album, Time. Uh, most of the songs I wrote expressing how I feel about my wife. Okay, nice. And um, th there's one in particular um, by the name of um, You're My Everything. And what happened was, it was on Valentine's Day that I went to the studio and did the voice on that song. I completely forgot that it was Valentine's Day. And on my way home, I heard it on the radio. So what I did was stop at the closest um, place where I could purchase a, a, a Valentine's card. Now, this was about like 7.30, 8 o'clock in the night. And that's a man thing. <laughs> yeah, as far as she's concerned, Valentine's Day has passed and gone a long time. She was online. I used her credit card to purchase the, <laughs> the, 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 the card. And she was online, so she knew exactly what I did. Mm -hmm. I made a CD of the song that I just voiced at the studio. I put it in the envelope. She was still on the computer when I got home, so in the office I put it on the desk. She didn't look at it. Because Valentine's Day, I'm late. Mm -hmm. Well, she opened the envelope the next day out of curiosity. And it was the greatest Valentine present ever. Because the song was about her and how I feel about her. Nice. So, um, things happen. And I, I think that's one of the greatest things that has kept our group together is the relationship that we have with the female folks. They play a very important role. Mm -hmm. They stabilize the thing. The kids are doing well in college and stuff, and it's a result of them and the combination of us. <laughs> so behind every successful man is yeah, a there strong is. woman. You agree, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I agree too. <laughs> oh, that's really a wonderful story, though. Yeah, now, so this the solo career thing is an extension of third world extension music. Of third world. Everything is that, about family in that group, though. Say that again? Everything is about family, it seems. Yeah, it's everything. Uh, on, on my solo album, Time, the new one, that will be released um, on the 11th of September on VP Records. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the songs there were played by third world musicians. The background harmonies were done by Catcore and other singers. So we all contribute to each other's efforts. Projects, yes. Yeah. So, I, and one of the main things I used to worry about, but I, I stopped worrying about it, is that when I go across the world, there were so much new reggae bands, groups, from Europe, from Africa, and there was not nothing like that happening in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. But now it has changed. You have groups like Curfew, C Sharp, really nice young groups. So I can retire now. I can I can say yes. Because being in a group is much different than being on your own. Mm -hmm. Being in a group is you you don't have to shine every night. And if you fall, there's somebody there to catch you. you up, right. Yeah. Right. So <laughs> You know, it's it, and and I see that happening now in Jamaica, and it's really, really, um, it, it's. It, I'm satisfied now. Okay. There are so much groups across the world playing reggae, but everybody in Jamaica wants to be a solo artist. Uh -huh, you know? uh -huh. And and to keep a group together is not is not an easy thing. It's not an easy thing. I mean, like me, for instance, I could have gotten swell Eddie. And decide and it's gone off on your own. Yes, yes. and nothing happened. <laughs> I'm gonna divert a bit from my questions because you you mentioned about groups all over the world and and nowadays. Well, I had a Japanese visitor recently, and I'm always introducing them to reggae music, and I said to her. Do you like reggae? She said, Japanese reggae, that struck me. Uh, we have a lot of 
dialogue and controversy and conversations about people outside of Jamaica adapting our music, uh, embracing it, and presenting it. How do you feel about that, whichever way you feel? Do you feel that we have been cheated as some may suggest, or do you think it's a good thing that the music is now so appreciated and so large that other folks are taking it and running with it? It's not our music anymore. Good. <laughs> and, it, and it was never intended to be our music. It was intended for exporting our culture. Um, what has happened? I, I, in each country that you go to, if you're in um, Budapest, Holland, you go to uh, Germany, you hear reggae music of their language, mm -hmm. their music. France produce more reggae music, make more records per day reggae than Jamaica. My problem I have with it is that as far as the business side is concerned in Jamaica, it's not being attended to and as, as the foreigners are paying attention to it. They approach it as not only music but as serious business. business. <laughs> and uh, I have a problem with something that was started in my country and we are behind in its presentation we are behind in its production wherever they play or record reggae music throughout the world they will always need Jamaica and Jamaican artists and Jamaican music because we set the tone we pick the subject, we the craft the dance, we craft the, the, the outfits and the colors. We, they, they can't do that by themselves. They, they don't know how to speak of social issues because in most of those countries, they're not experiencing what we are experiencing in, ter in terms of social unrest or social rest. They don't experience mango season like us. Mm -hmm. They don't have the fruits that we have. They don't have the weather that we have. So uh, they're very limited in what they can say. So they always adapt and imitate what we are saying. So on that level, we'll always be on top in terms of we give them. But we need to work on how managers manage artists, be fair, mm -hmm. uh, it don't give us two contracts when I see one and there's another one that <laughs> is not corresponding with the one that I have. Things like that. The business side of reggae music in Jamaica needs serious attention mm -hmm. because it's it's big business. It's not, you know, it's it's it, it's it's in Japan last year. Japan Fest had an attendance of about three hundred thousand people. And there wasn't one reggae Jamaican artist on the bill. They don't need us anymore. Mm -hmm. The Japanese have the ability to imitate. I remember when I was in Japan in the early 90s or late 80s, when Trija Love was on the charts there, sold platinum. We did studio um, television station performances and the camera weren't on the faces. The camera on the fingers of the instruments, the camera on the drums, and they took those tapes and studied. That's what they do. <laughs> they start, no, there's another thing that we have given the world that is massive, and you hardly hear anybody say anything about it. It's sound system. Massive, massive contribution to the world in France, not everywhere. Reggae music has educated the world about Africa. Isn't that amazing? 
the continent of Africa and the tiny island of Jamaica has shown the world and highlighted what Africa means to us. Where the voice is. <laughs> it's amazing. Where the voice is. So I was in France a couple of years ago and the mayor of Lille told me that they're building buildings to house sound system in France. Mm -hmm. In Jamaica, I never hear anybody say anything about building any form of facility to house our music or our art. Do so, you think we in Jamaica, well, I'm in New York, but we Jamaicans take that legacy, because it is a legacy, for granted? We're not taking it seriously. It's there, so we don't give it that importance. I remember, I remember as a child or a young person, every Wednesday or Thursday afternoon, mm -hmm. you would have the satellites performing on JBC TV or whatever. Mm -hmm. And if you were to ask for those tapes today, they're lost. They have re recorded news, sports. Um, that's the sad part of the thing. Very sad. And as you said, we probably take it for granted because I can't remember the last time I see anyone planting a mango tree in Jamaica. But every year, this year was one of the biggest mango seasons ever. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to plant it because it's coming again anyway. We don't have to pay any attention to it because it will always be there. Mm -hmm. Well, in the case of our art and our music, it, it, people have taken over and it is making... The, the colors of red, green, and gold, the images of all those things, the proceeds don't come back to Jamaica. They're, people, Chinese, are making them stuff. Money from it, yeah. And the Indians are selling it in the grill for an enormous sum. <laughs> As a matter of fact, red, green, many people, many persons believe that red, green, and gold is our national colors. Yes. They actually believe that. It's the Ethiopian because that's, colors. It goes right? back to me saying that a small island is ours and spearheaded by Bob Marley. Mm -hmm has educated the world on Africa. Mm -hmm. Admirable. Yes. Your strongest, Move along, darling. Move along. Your strongest musical influences. Who would you say inspired you the most? Uh, if I anyone. Always person. Say, I always say Nat King Cole. Nat King Cole. Yeah. Why? Because he... The story that I heard about him, he was he was really a singer, he was a, 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 a piano player. And the singer didn't turn up one night and the owner of the club said to him, you have to sing. And he says, but I can't sing, I'm not a singer. Mm. And so if you don't sing, you're going to leave this place right now. And it turned out that the man was one of the greatest singers in Ever. the world. I, I, his tone, it's smooth. Um, I could understand every word he said. A lot of singers, nice tone, nice sound. Probably it's a style, but I, I can't understand some of what they're saying. And, and in, in my thing, I try to each word, the person that is our person is listening would understand exactly what I'm saying. And I think um, not getting cold was the, the, the first person Master that drew that art. to um, singing. It is said, Bonnie, that the late 60s and 70s were the most creative and competitive decade in Jamaica's music history. You were a part, or you are a part of that history. The Heptones, were the Heptones, the Wailers, Jacob Miller, and a slew of other artists who churned out hits after hits after hits. How did you, and I know I'm going all over the place, 
how did you guys manage to continue to shine amidst all this brilliance? Because it was really a brilliant period, don't you think? I think it was one of the most exciting times that I can remember in my country is the birth of our own music. There are very few countries in the world that have their own music here. Most countries share. So I go back to the fact again, another little island, a small, tiny little place like Jamaica, we have our own music. Exciting times. Um, and it continues. It continues. Yes, it continues. I mean, regardless of what people might want to say about dance all this and dance all that and this change and that change. I love dance all. It's exciting. Mm -hmm. Energize you. It, 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 this thing that they're talking about is funny and humorous. You know? Um, when you get a little too dirty for me now, you're going to lose me now. But not all of it is dirty. You know? And I always say that reggae music is... Take, for instance, you have jazz. And under the heading of jazz, you have modern jazz, classic jazz. It's the same thing with reggae. Under reggae, you have easy listening reggae, dancehall reggae, lovers rock reggae, roots rock reggae. So whatever category suits you, you choose that one. Mm -hmm. You know, so don't fight one dancehall this and dancehall that. It's just one other category of the whole the whole thing. I've had yeah. discussions with folks who. Uh make a fuss about dance or artists being too the slackness and i've said to them that reggae has always been a voice about social issues i've also said to them that it may sound slack some of it not all of it it may sound violent but it's what these guys are seeing would you yeah. agree with me or disagree? Yeah, you have some music now where when you go to the concert, many people get stabbed, shot. But just because our little island is a little island, they're always focusing on the negative mm -hmm. of our country. They never highlight the positive. And I'm speaking about outside of our nation mm -hmm. now. Because I think one of the main things is envy and jealousy. Jamaicans are not normal people in our Never Brazil. normal so, people. <laughs> listen, man. You, I, I say this every day. And the song that I have released, the single, Land We Love, it explains that very clearly that we are number one. We are champions. Every day it's a holiday in Jamaica. Every, Every day. day. Despite yeah. all the pressures. Yeah, yeah. So you took me to my next question. <laughs> yeah, and I love to leave. Yes, and Land We Love is a tribute in song to Jamaica on her 50th year of nationhood. What prompted you to create this tune? I know it's the love. But expound um, on that for me. Well, that's another strange story because that song I wrote, that song around 2007. Really? Um, there's a gentleman by the name of Guillaume Bogart who lives in France who has close association with Sly and Robbie. He has all their music, rhythms that are halfway recorded, and he constantly keeps sending me these music. So in 2007, I was just going through and ran into this rhythm and that song just came. Last year, I, March, I was going through some music and I ran into it again. So what I did, I recorded it March of last year and it so happened that it's like a co it was intentional for me to have it released or recorded or put out for this 50th. But I'm a Joseph. I'm from the tribe of Joseph. I'm an Aquarius. And, and throughout my life, things happen 
where I'm basically not in charge of it, but I'm following instructions, mm -hmm. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Eh? And, and that's the beauty about even songwriting. Um, sometimes you, you're not prepared, you're not ready, you're not, say you're going to write a song, but something is, came to you. And, and it, when you didn't take it, you're the most miserable person in the world because you should have taken it. So you just take it and it happens. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and I think that is what happened with um, Land We Love. Land it, we it, it came. It came. I, I, and, and part of the fact that I love my country very much, yeah? The passion. I, I hear the passion in that song. Yeah, I love I my wrote country. about it on Facebook. Like that. Any new projects in the pipeline? Well, next year, Third World celebrates 40 years. Mm -hmm. And we are planning. Uh, 40th anniversary album with songs that we have recorded before, uh, maybe a couple new songs, mm -hmm. and um, maybe a two CD album um, set with a video, a DVD. And next year we'll be touring on our 40th anniversary tour worldwide. Okay, so, so that's, that's cool very, that. very special. Mm -hmm. And we're very proud, and we're really looking forward to next year. Me too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think you guys are going to be in New York again before the, is it this year, in November? I I know I'm go, going up to Canada tomorrow. Okay. And we're in Montreal on the 5th. Okay. And we just left New York last weekend. We, oh, we did yes, um, yes. two New York shows within, I think, less than a month. But New York is third world, it's territory. New York is third world. Yeah, yeah I, used to, I used to drive yellow cab up in New York for two years. I remember you telling me that <laughs> yeah. in 1994. That's when yeah, I interviewed you. I still remember my company, Forest Maintenance Corporation. Wow. <laughs> now, I think in that interview, Bunny, you mentioned, I hope I'm not wrong, something about you doing some work on Broadway. Yeah, there was, was um, that's another thing I love about New York, is that you can leave your house mm -hmm. and anything can happen. Um, I, 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 I was out up in Manhattan once and I passed uh, a, a rehearsal room. I heard people speaking and I looked and the lady called me in and the next thing you know, I have seven parts in a play, Lament to Rastafari. It was written oh. by Edgar White, a Trinidadian playwright. Mm. And that was another experience that I really enjoyed. So and actor, I, I, I love theater. I love the theater. Actor, I, songwriter. Yeah, I love the theater. Vocalist, and you're a musician. They say all singers are musicians. Yeah. Uh, well, we went all over the place to this interview and have skipped some questions and asked. We have answered some of them before. <laughs> I was ready, but that's how it was. I was prepared for you. I read them in its entirety. <laughs> I studied them. <laughs> any most, any moment that you would categorize as most memorable? I know you have had many memorable moments. Yeah, there's any a one few. One moment that stands out. There's a few, but I think the number one I would have to say was the first time we went to Africa. First time we went to Nigeria. Um, we took our own lights, we took our own sound, we took our own equipment, and it, we were at um, one of the universities and they were putting up the light rig. And every time they turned the thing for it to go up, the students would make a noise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I never forget that. Um, Africa was was I think the number one thing for me to actually see or to actually see African woman and realize that you're actually singing to African women. To African women. <laughs> yeah. That was a trip for me, you know? But there are others like the uh, Black Music Festival out in Pasadena, Rose Bowl, where all the black artists, Michael Jackson, Narita Franklin, Luther Vandross, everybody was there. And we were on our way to Japan the next day, and in the LA Times, there were three columns of, of the show the day before. 
and we were referred to in each color. And at the end of one of them, they said um, that third world was the newest and freshest thing they've seen on the entire show. That was a hundred thousand people with every black artist, and to be mentioned in all three colors, and to say it's the newest and freshest thing that was that was it. Yeah. We spoke about the Jamaican music industry, the lack of proper, for lack of a better word, management. What is your single greatest desire for Jamaican music and the music industry? What would you like to see happen in a huge way? That would benefit. First thing, uh, what I'd love to see for the next 50 years in my country is education for my children. Mm -hmm. Right now at the Jamaica School of Music, there are so much talented musicians and players of instruments. I would like more institutions to be built to house all those young children across Jamaica who want to get into the music industry and show them that it is something that if you work hard at it, you will be able to support yourself and take care of yourself from it. Because it's not just Jamaica alone anymore, your services you'll be servicing the entire world because the seed have already been sown. So it's just for you to follow through. And um, for our government and our ministry... Greetings, family. This is Bonnie Rocks, Rocks, and you're listening to a selection of music from my new album, Time. Mixed by Soul Rebel, DJ Crown Prince. Easy. Run to artists. And it is just sitting there. There are millions of, it's just sitting there. there. When you go to Germany and perform, the tax that is deducted from whatever you earn, you're supposed to file for those taxes. Hardly any Jamaican entertainer file for any of those taxes, and it's just sitting there. So you're why saying can't there we, are refunds due to, to, to... Yes, why can't okay. we have a commission or a team of lawyers out of Jamaica that would say then, let us go and find these funds mm -hmm. and use some of these funds to build schools, pay the artists who... Why, why can't we do that? Mm -hmm. There are hundreds of millions of dollars out in the world for us. But each artist just can't turn up and say, I am this, pay me now. Mm -hmm. <coughs> it takes an organization to sit down couple lawyers, music lawyers, and work the thing out and go and collect those monies. So I'd love to see some of that, you know? That's a revelation. I, I didn't know that. Yeah, do a research on it. Find out how much money there is for us in France. I know in terms of the publishing. Publishing, each time when your music taxes. is made on television or radio, mm -hmm. you're supposed to be paid. Mm -hmm. And these countries do pay. Mm -hmm. But it is sitting in some account somewhere. And artists who need those funds no, millions of dollars. And it is true because um, I remember being on radio, not much anymore, but each time we, we played the music, the station reported it to, to the organization. Yes. Yes, or we had to. to write it in. It had to yeah. go in. Call Jamaica and find out how much royalties have been paid to artists based on airplay. Performance royalties. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Right. That, that's really a serious issue that I never thought of before. I knew about the publishing. Thanks for telling me. Now, is there anything that we left out that you want to say? Yeah, I, there is something. There is about 300 children in Jamaica right now that need open heart surgery and it might be more mm -hmm. 
there is a group organization by the name of Chain of Hope, the Jamaican Children Heart Fund. Now, I'll give you a quick little rundown. There are a team of doctors out of Fort Lauderdale, Joe DiMaggio's Hospital, and nurses that take their vacation each year and go to Jamaica and perform on these children for free. Last year, we had doctors from England and nurses who joined in with us. That's why it's now Chain of Hope slash Jamaican Children Heart Fund. The thing is, each time they go to Jamaica and perform these surgeries for free to the parents, they refer to it as a mission. Mm -hmm. So what we're trying to do is to increase the missions instead of one mission per year. If we can do several missions, then it will be much better for those children who are in dire need of this attention. And you're directly involved with that effort, right? I am the spokesperson for that and uh, from my upcoming album and even from my previous album proceeds from that album would go towards the jamaican children half of and um we're trying to extend the program because year before last they invited instead of just operating on these children they invited two schools to come and have the children tested. And surprisingly, there were quite a few children unknown to them and their parents that they also needed to have some attention. How can you know? we help? So How can the public help? The public can go online to Jamaica Children Heart Fund, jchf.com. Okay. and read and get some information and try and help regardless of how small the donation is try and help because these doctors have been doing this for over 17 years mm -hmm. I know Shaggy has the uh, Bustamante Children, Children's Hospital which I commend him for he's doing a tremendous job with that effort you know um, but he can only do so much so we need to reach out to these children. I, I, I'm, I'm, when I speak of this, uh, sometimes I, I feel as if I want to cry. Emotional. Because, yeah, some of these children are so small, you can hold them in one in the one. palm of your hand. And to see, this, to see the, the, the look on the parents' faces after these procedures. <laughs> that's sent, alone. Yeah? That alone, yeah, that's alone. <laughs> Will you send me or have one of your I will. ladies I, I send will. me some information and I'll put it out next week? I will send it to Shelly. Yes. Oh, she's a tremendous person, eh? Great. Yeah, oh, she's the best. And Heather. And Heather. Yeah, okay. And let's just say hi to Heather Cameron. Yes, my yes, love. Yes, yes. Oh, hello. Thank you, guys. So what you said to me. Yeah, all the best, eh? All the best. Um, I, thanks for spending time with us. Yes, okay. man. It's my pleasure, man. <laughs> and we, I, I continue to be inspired by your music. Wonderful okay. music. Yeah, I see, I see your, your postings every all the day. Time. <laughs> all the time. But thank you so much. God bless you, darling. Wonderful. And thank you, okay? You're welcome. Bye-bye. Just another lesson Raindrops falling on my rooftop, playing a rhythm that is oh so nice. My baby is walking and squeezing me so tight. I got my smoke and my favorite drink. I feel the fullness bubbling all over, and right about now I'm feeling so right.